The original mesmograph could draw incredible images in sand like this, but it was big, ugly, hard to use, had lighting problems, and, as you can see in this example of its actual drawing speed, painfully slow. So I built this new version that solves all those problems, particularly the lighting and speed issues. This video will show how to make one and how to use it. It starts with a base of quarter inch plywood that's 19 inches in diameter. Next we have a 17 inch diameter disc of 3 quarter inch plywood which is what the motor is mounted on and this top disc is again 3 quarter inch plywood and it's 14 and a quarter inches in diameter. This is the disc that rotates and drives the entire drawing machine. It's covered with a sheet of 1 16th inch seal which is the base on which the magnets that hold the gears in place stick. Between the upper two discs is a 12 inch diameter pancake bearing. Three legs support the upper discs high enough to provide room for the motor. I chose a 12 volt DC gear motor rated at 20 RPM, but I run it at 6 volts for 10 RPM. I found that at the higher speed, the drawing action was so fast that it was jarring to watch. 10 RPM is fast enough to be entertaining, yet slow enough to project a certain note of graceful elegance. Next we have the main drive gear assembly. It's a 19 inch diameter, 2.5 inch wide ring of 3 quarter inch plywood with a 75 tooth gear cut into it. I'll explain later how to design and make the gears. Mounted above it is a 3 quarter inch by 3 quarter inch plywood ring elevated by 3 quarter inch shims. The ring supports the tray of sand the machine actually draws on and the shims place it high enough to make room for the gears, magnets, and drawing arm that fit inside of it. Here we are with the two pieces we've already discussed put together. The length of the three legs that connect the upper rings to the base is determined by the length of the legs, which is determined by the motor you use to provide enough clearance. In my case, this ended up being five and a quarter inches tall. Next, we need a tray to hold the sand in which the images are drawn. I used a 19 inch diameter, 3 quarter inch by 3 quarter inch ring of plywood with a disc of 1 8 inch thick factory enameled whiteboard attached to the bottom. You need to type with one side enameled white and the other black. Stick a ring of 12 volt LED lights around the inside upper edge of the ring. Pass the wires through a groove cut into the plywood ring and tape it down flush. Place a 19 inch diameter by 2 and a quarter inch wide ring of the same whiteboard material on top of the tray with a black side facing down. This blocks direct view of the lights, the glare from which would make the traces hard to see. Secure the tray with spring clips at each of the shim points. I made these out of an old coat hanger. Here's what it looks like with the lights turned on. The low position of the LEDs means their light barely grazes the surface of the sand, creating bright hills and dark valleys that make the traces appear sharp and clear. Now it's time to cut some gears, which is the most time-consuming part of the build. Use one of the many online gear generators to create images of the gears you want. I found 43, 37, 30, 18, and 16 tooth gears work well with the main 75 tooth gear. I used a pitch of 5 and a pitch angle of 27. Enter those parameters and the number of teeth desired and the generator will calculate the pitch diameter as well as a scaled image of the gear. Capture the image, resize it in the photo processing software of your choice so that it prints out at its correct size and then print it. Glue this to a piece of half inch thick plywood, cut it out, sand the teeth smooth with 220 grit sandpaper and lubricate them with a light coat of bar soap. The pictures will have the center of each gear marked. Drill a 33 64 inch diameter hole at the marked center and remove the paper patterns. Drill a few half inch diameter holes along one radius of each gear. The small gears may only have room for one hole. 
cut a disc of half inch thick plywood slightly smaller than the inside diameter of each gear as defined by the root of the teeth. Drill a half inch diameter hole in the center of each disc and glue eighth inch thick super magnets to the bottom. These will hold the gear to the metal sheet on the turntable. Pound a half inch dowel into the hole and cut it to length so that when the gear is on it, the dowel is slightly lower than the face of the gear. This is how the gears will be mounted on the machine and the dowels allow the gears to rotate. The gears rotate pretty easily, but a few pieces of Teflon tape will make them run even easier. You'll also need a fixed pivot, which is a wood disc with magnets on its bottom sized in height so that it's the same height as the top of the gears. The reason the first mesmograph was so large was that it had a one-piece arm that carried the magnet that moved the ball bearing to produce traces in the sand. This meant it had to be long enough to maintain contact with both pins at all times. Consequently, it repeatedly stuck far beyond the edge of the drawing field. To make the new mesmograph more compact, I made a two-piece drive arm. The sliding bar is a nine-inch length of half inch by 3 16 inch steel bar stock polished smooth. A hole at one end with two small magnets fits onto a metal pin. The magnets help keep the bar connected to the pin. The magnet that pulls the ball bearing around the drawing field can be placed anywhere along its length just by sliding it wherever you want it. The wooden half of the arm is nine inches long by one and a half inches wide and three quarters of an inch thick. A groove cut along its full length is the track in which the steel bar slides. This slot allows the metal pin to slide along its length and these holes are how the pin on the gear drives the arm. This three ounce lead weight prevents the end of the wood arm from dipping down in those cases where the arm can't be fully supported. And this is what the mechanism looks like in operation. Two six volt lantern batteries connected in series provide power. The motor is driven by connecting just one of the batteries while the lights are connected across both. Altogether, it took about 30 hours to make this machine. Well, let's throw some gears on her and see how she works. First up, we'll try something simple. A magnet glued to a three-quarter inch piece of plywood uh, fixed to the 37 tooth gear. I use a quarter inch slingshot ball for creating the traces. This produces a slowly revolving series of ellipses. To save some time, let's speed things up. Have some short pieces of quarter inch wood and steel dowels handy to move around the holes in the various gears to create a wide range of traces. This is a typical spiral graph type image, but still pretty neat. Next, we'll keep the gear with the magnet the same. The only difference is, is we're going to drive this gear through a pinion, which means that instead of the gear rolling around the outer gear, now it's going to be rotating in the opposite direction it was before. Let's see what it does. It's surprising how much a simple change like this makes. Let's hit the turbo button again. To help locate the position of the magnet so you know where to place the steel ball, tie a screw to the end of a string and hang it over the sand tray. When it's over the magnet, it'll point at it. I think the herringbone or chevron pattern this setup makes is very attractive. Now let's try something a little bit more interesting. I have the metal pin on the middle hole of the 37 tooth gear, a wood pin on the fixed pivot, and the magnet two inches from the metal pivot. Let's see what it looks like. It looks like a propeller to me. 
Let's speed it up to see how it ends up looking. Pretty cool. Next, all I'm going to do is slide the magnet one inch along the bar. I've jumped to the end to save time and zoomed in because the trace is getting a little small. This one makes me think of the fan to a jet engine. Moving the magnet another inch gives us this. The trace is only five inches across, yet has exquisite detail. One inch farther and we've got something fan-like again. Yet this one has some extremely fine detail in the center. Let's try a different gear. This time we're swapping out the 37 tooth gear with a 43 tooth gear. Again with a fixed magnet and the middle point. I've gone back to high speed again because this one is a lot of fun to watch grow. It reminds me of an artist's idea of an electron orbiting in an atom. The seven lobes makes me think of nitrogen. For our final pattern, I put on the 37 toothed gear with a wood pin driving the arm and then the metal pin on a 30 toothed gear with the magnet about an inch and a half from the metal pin. Let's see what it looks like. I have to say that at this point it looks like a real mess. But before too long, it's obvious it's going to be a five-pointed star. It ends up looking a little like a star made out of ribbon that's been twisted. The examples shown in this video are just a few of the hundreds if not thousands of unique traces the new mesmograph drawing machine can make. I hope you enjoyed this video and as always, thanks for watching.